Thank you very much, Peter. It's good to be at Bomersvik this wonderful autumn, sunny morning. Uh, Bomersvik is sort of an oasis or a heart of Swedish uh, Swedish social democracy, and it's it's always great to be back here. I always, I want to apologize that we are the only male panel here during the day. So I'm glad we had a, a great woman party chairman uh, introducing the subject and that it's also done uh, in favor, in, in memory of a great uh, uh, other Swedish woman who was uh, leading the foreign policy of Sweden and, uh, and uh, who is with us today with these seminars, namely Anna Lind. And uh, I could see Anna Lind at this seminar curious uh, laughing uh, with her explosive laughter and uh, her funny comments, but also her sharp mind. And uh, I'm very, very grateful as chairman of the Anna Lind uh, Memorial Fund uh, that we uh, devote these seminars to, to, uh, to Anna. Uh, she would have been uh, quite actively engaged in this, these discussions today. Um, the theme is uh, religion and uh, the role of religion in politics. And um, I don't know where to start, but uh, I, I think one could start from the point of view that uh, religion, of course, always has played a role uh, in the world. We would have liked to see a, an ideal role for religion as the peacemaker, as standing up for reconciliation, as standing up for respect for every human being's equal value, all the ethical values that we, we, we associate with the best sides of religion. And uh, that is, of course, uh, the uh, spirit in which we would hope the, we would go in the future. I'm sure Kogi Hama particularly will dwell on this. But let's face it, it has been a, a history of also a very strong political roles of, the, of, the, of religions, and unfortunately also very violent roles we know the, uh, the, the fact of the Crusades, we know uh, the facts of Inquisition, and there are many, many examples also in modern history. And um, I think, therefore, we have to deal with this issue uh, on two levels. One, the personal and ethical level, and the values for which we must stand, and I think we in the Social Democratic Party should focus very much on values, values that guide our work, ideology and not least the world outside, which we will revert to later today. But the second dimension is, of course, the fact that religion also is being used. Religion is being used um, in uh, power purposes, uh, in, um, in um, attempts to identify the other side as them, and then painting ourselves as us in a particular <laughs> good category. And this is very dangerous. If I were to talk about the global threats today, I would, of course, enumerate the classic, not the now, now classic traits, but the, what we usually think of global threats, environmental degradation, uh, d diseases that spread over the borders, organized crime, terrorism, and all that. But I would also add one more global threat, and that is the growing alienation, the growing animosity between religions. Uh, and uh, I, perhaps I shouldn't phrase it between religions, between groups that want to have a polarized world and who look at the outside world as a threat. Have you noticed that there is both in, in the Western world and in the Islamic world now strong tendencies to want to see the other side as a, a problem? Uh, you look at the uh, risk of radicalization and terrorism, you know what happens at the airport. You know what happens if you have a special name or a special dress when you go through the airport security. But you also, from the side, from the other side, there is a, there is, we, the Western world, is seen as a threat. Even democracy is questioned, and our lifestyle and our morals are considered a different, a different category. So there are very strong tendencies now in the world to divide us into us and them. And I would say that in the day and age of globalization, and we will come back to that later today, it would be terrible, wouldn't it, if the outside world, if globalization is seen as a threat, as a problem, as a peril, and not as a potential and a possibility. 
So th therefore, I think this, uh, this uh, use of religion to polarize people is extremely dangerous. And we have to be aware of that and fight it. And we see many, many examples. Uh, we see, of course, the discussion on the global level to which I'm sure Maximo will come back of the clash of civilization and how to, f how to fight that phenomenon. We also see it, as, as um, Mona said a while ago, uh, in the resistance in certain quarters uh, to have Turkey join the European Union, where even there is talk about Europe being a Christian continent. This was, I think, consciously promoted by certain parts of the CDU in Germany, unfortunately, some years ago. And we see similar tendencies today in the Netherlands and France, which are extremely dangerous, where we identify that, that group, that, that the addition of another religion as a problem. And of course, this is completely unrealistic, since we, in our own societies, have the different religions. We all already are multicultural. We are, we are already us in our societies. And if we, invite, if we introduce an element where we identify another religion, a group of people considered to be belong to another religion as a problem, it's not only outside, let's say, Turkey or out in the Islamic world, it's also inside our own societies. There are five million Muslims in, uh, in uh, France, six in Germany, I think, and four in the UK, 400,000 in Sweden. So we have to find ways of diminishing the role of religion used as a reason to polarize people. And how we do this is going to be a great challenge. and has to do with the big issue now, how we deal with migration, the migration issues. And also, as you know, there are very dark political forces fishing in very murky waters, <coughs> and who look at this problem and understand that there is a fear of the outside world and want to exploit that feeling. This doesn't mean that we cannot, uh, we must not uh, deal with the problems involved in integration, involved in migration issues, but we really have to watch out that we don't divide the world and our own societies into us and them, and that paradoxically this great thing religion standing for, for every human being's equal value, for respect, for living together in peace, that this, this very emotional area of religi your, religions, your religion and your, your belief is used in, 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 in the projection of power to create gulfs and divisions among people. So I think this is the challenge, Peter, that we, we face and perhaps we could discuss this morning. And uh, I'm very glad to, again, to be here at Boomersvik in this international context today to discuss this subject. Thank you.